Welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. It isn't like I've just done this introduction. It didn't work. Uh, we have got a full house this week. Mr. Vitti is back in the house. People will be delighted. Ooh. People will be delighted. Sam. You think? Ever press. Uh, David, do. Listen, me, Hi. Sam and Ped discussed it last week. Mm, I you bet. You and your disappearances. <laughs> For um, the whole show. The yeah, whole show, I, I, really. I, I, can, really. I can imagine. Because the football wasn't great. Um, mm. Wait, hey, nothing's changed there then. Um, so, David, welcome back. Mm. Barry. Welcome back. Um, Sam, I want to hear you say hello. Hello. And hi. Are you okay? I'm great, you know. I'm really good. I'm, I'm an ever-present, though, like you say. I'll take yeah, him off, but I'll, yeah. I'll strap you it up. Don't have I'll to worry him. about your your Jordan Pickford. Pick He's Ashley Young. Or Ashley Young, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, I've got nothing else to do, nowhere else to be, you see. Yeah. That's my... That's my <laughs> well, let's go back to Dave, then. So, Dave, people were getting yes. slightly worried that you uh, were now under the same agent as Andrew Bush and were well, ready to uh, move on to pastures new. So, I knew that this would happen, and okay. I knew, you know, and this was my concern, is that there would have been um, conspiracy theories involving bushcraft and me. <laughs> and and obviously, I was concerned about what, well, mainly, you know, what, what you would all think, right? Um, but then also, you know, what other people might think as well. So just to explain myself in terms of my absence for the last two weeks, right, it's been mm-hmm. um, two weeks ago, I couldn't be here because I was away filming all day uh, on a project, which I'm not allowed to tell you about, but I will do <sighs> soon. But anyway, I was I was out, out all day. Yeah. And then last Monday should have been all fine. However, um, I had to sell my car uh, last Monday. Um, because it basically blew up on me and overheated uh, a few days beforehand. And anyway, so the guy who was coming to pick the car up texts me at about half 10, quarter to 11, saying I'm en route up from Brighton, which is an hour and a half away, saying I'll be there just after 12. And I thought, oh, well, that's knackered doing this because I can't have him turn up and I'm going to be, you know, doing this till one o'clock. So uh, regrettably, at the 11th hour, I had to pull out of this last week because I had to sell my car. So um, for that, I... Yeah. Warm-up, Dave. It, it, it was kind of it was it was a bit yeah. of a Richard Wright moment, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so... fell on a side. Can I just two yeah. questions? Mm. Was Mika Richards involved in any of the selling no. of the car? <laughs> no, he he no. wasn't dancing at any point okay. or, or pulling that is, silly face. Who on earth would buy a car that's just blown up? That was my that question. Was, that yeah. was the biggest yeah. thing that came yeah. to my mind. I well, had to sell my car because it blown it up. Sounds like well, something. Be... Was a clown. Oh, was it a special effects fella? No, I mean, what I've done there is I've effectively glossed over what's essentially quite a dull story because what happened is on the way back <laughs> from filming two weeks ago, which yeah. I can't tell you about you sadly tell because, of, because of um, of, of type reasons, yeah. is that on the motorway on the way way back, my car suddenly pinged saying it had overheated and I needed to stop immediately. And it turns out that actually the water pump had failed. Right. Okay. And so the water pump had gone. The water pump costs a grand to fix, right? Which is why I had to get rid of that then. So when I say it blew up, it didn't mm. actually blow up, okay. but it overheated. Well, it potentially overheated and it needed a new water pump and therefore I couldn't drive it anymore. So uh, well, that's why. But this guy's buying it knowing it needs a new water pump and oh, the price okay. obviously. It's a story for the ages, in... Dave. You what? It's a story for the ages. In a way, yeah. 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 Water it's pump. a fable. Mm. Mm. Yeah, avoid Micha Richards. You know. Maybe. So, so that's where that's where I've been. So okay. I apologise, and I've missed you all, and and I'm now back. It's great. Um, both car related, though. I like that. There's a consistency there, the isn't it? He's both yeah. car related incidents. Did he say the first one mm. was car related. I don't think he did. No, the first one was filming. Although I did, the car did go wrong on the way back from the filming job. So for two weeks, basically on car issues, yeah. Yeah. car trouble. Yeah. I enjoyed the use of the phrase bushcraft, though. That's nice. Yeah, well, yeah. thank I, you. I, mm, I, I, like I can't that. be the only one who feels like this constant talking about bushcraft and, and being labelled with that label is uh, is is just a threat to all of us for mm. if we ever think about not turning up. Yeah, it is. It's, like, uh, it it's, is. A, it's, a, it's a veiled well, threat. I mean, it, can it, I just... It's veiled thinly. Yeah. All right, can I just... <laughs> very, very thinly. <laughs> can I just... It looms you know, large. I, I'll just, you know, I just want to bring up the bush in the room. Um, Go on. Do you ever feel, Sam, like like we do refer back to Andy Bush far too many times? And does that make you feel like your presence on this podcast is slightly, you know, 
<laughs> not wanted, or because you, you know it's like it, it's well, lingering over. Are you saying we're giving salmon inferiority? It's, it's like lingering over, like an old girlfriend. This talk of mm. the bush and bushcraft and I never bush felt that way. I don't think I, I don't felt that way. What you answer. I don't think it's meant as it's no. What we're saying is. It's, I look at it as sort of things you don't do. Okay. That's how I look it's, at it. Like, you know, when you get rules when you go in places, this thing. Okay. Mm. You know, at, years ago, the swimming yeah. pool, no bombing and no heavy petting. No was bush. one of the things. And, well, the bombing he said there, uh, Sam. You know, I just, <laughs> um, I just don't want, so, I just don't want Sam to feel like, you know. No, Sam's been fair and back to the bush. Sam's silent. Sam's not Jake O'Brien. Sam hasn't mm. been bought yeah. and left in the cupboard somewhere. <laughs> Sam's fully Big in. cupboard, though, eh? To It'd put Jake O'Brien in. Yeah. But they, yeah. We've got no evidence of that, have we? We've only got Sam's word for it, that he's massive. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. feel... I, <laughs> I, I, mean, I can send you some pictures later on. Well, will. no, it, no it, thanks, Sam. It's all, about, be honest. it's all about the angle. The angle it's is massive. Possibly. I mean, if, if, we, if, we, if we put you next to Gary Barlow, how would that look? Yeah. <laughs> what would that look like, uh, Sam? <laughs> Thing about Gary Barlow is he's not he's not the biggest man in the world anyway. No, so, no. but no. I, I, thanks for your words, there, Ped. And mm. I, I I've never felt unwanted on this podcast. Good good weirdly, lad. about two minutes ago when you brought that up, and now yeah. I feel <laughs> he'd never considered <laughs> it. He'd never it does seem it. it does seem like if someone in the audience could probably figure out like with some kind of technology about how how many how much airtime Andy Bush had on this podcast when he was a guest, mm. when he was a regular mm. feature, and how much airtime he's had since. And I would yeah. say. Yeah. It's probably more since he left, so maybe yeah, probably it, it, it's a PR masterstroke from him because his brand is still very much front and center on Toffee mm-hmm. TV. Mm-hmm. We, he's nowhere to be seen. Mm-hmm. We need some kind of Bush AI, do we? Yeah, I mean, there's a mm-hmm. lot of that going around, or no Bush. It AI. could be just called Spot the Bush. Yeah, it's not something that <laughs> we could we could diversify with it as well. Maybe it could be a seller. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You never know. I, w- Listen, I, I would also just... love. To Go talk on. about the AI thing that you sent in the group at some point that is appropriate. We're going to that. Let's gloss Good. over what was yeah. not a very good game of football at the weekend. Uh, Are we was... doing that now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. Well, I've, I've I've got something to bring up as well, but we can do it later. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, let's, let's, get it yeah. let's get this quickly fine. out of the way. Okay, let's just in get fact, this out of the way. In yeah. fact, I'll go to Ped for a for sort of a very brief take on the game because mm. we're going. We'll be going through it. All day, so we don't really yeah. need. It was a bit crap. It was crap, Dave. <laughs> your thoughts, Dave. What was your thoughts? <laughs> Sorry, my thoughts on it was. Yeah. I, I mean, I I saw the highlights, um, and yeah, it didn't it didn't look good. A great save from uh, from Pickford at the mm-hmm. end um, mm-hmm. to deny Danny Ings. Uh, we'd have scored had Somerville not come back and made a fantastic tackle at the mm-hmm. end. Um, but yeah, all in all, uh, dull. But we didn't lose. So, you know, look at it that way. That's literally Sean okay. Dyche's uh, mantra. Mm. Sam? Mm. I was rubbish, wasn't it? I'm sick of feeling the same way on a Saturday, which is either really angry or just incredibly frustrated. And my Saturdays are fairly... Like, my like my routine is, like, I'll watch the match and then I'll go to a gig. And just driving to the gig, I'm always just feeling annoyed, which is not mm. great before you're trying to do stand-up comedy to people. <laughs> but it's... It, over the last like couple of weeks, I've watched three of the worst teams in the Premier League: Southampton, West Ham, and Everton twice. Mm-hmm. And it's been like both teams, Southampton and West Ham, both had the door open for us to walk through, and we just were well, either incapable or, or didn't seem to want to go through. And mm-hmm. and this Sean Dice tactic of letting the opposition grow into the match is pants, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. just the pits. And like how Danny Ings didn't score because he always scores against us. It was a great save. But it's, it was just, it, when it got to about the 60-minute mark, I thought, we're not going to score. They're going to grow into the game even more, and they're probably going to have loads of chances at the end. And I was actually surprised, and in the end, quite relieved that, like Dave said, we didn't lose, but it's not really anything to be celebrating. It's weird, isn't it? Because you're right there, but like, there was that sort of realisation. I probably had that exactly the same time. But now, after Lindstrom had that header, it was sort of like, mm. we're... We just aren't gonna score a goal here. It's yeah. just mm. not gonna happen because we were we were getting less and less into it, you know. And they Jordan Pickford's made, you know, some good I mean the one at the end's a tremendous save. Mm. Um he's made two really good saves. He made another good one in the second half from I think it was Rodriguez's shot that come through loads of players and he yeah. made a good save from it. And he had to be the first sort of work he had to do was in the right the last minute of the first half. Mm. We just got less and less effective as the game went on. 
and that's the frustration. That's and also Somerville, see, it? Somerville at the post as well, with everyone sort of coming yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. they should have won. Just given a, a couple of brief lines on it. Um, yeah, I think um, when you look at the opportunities both teams had, they had far more than us. Mm. Of course, they're the home side. Um, and yeah, the manager has somehow come out of it thinking that we were hard done by. Or, or um, let me let me just let me just read the first paragraph uh, of the match report, which was um, interesting to say the least. Um, oh, where's it gone? It's it honestly. This is it's you find this will clean up in the edit. This will be good. This yeah, be yeah. Good this, it's yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's if we edited stuff. If we <laughs> <laughs> what's what's editing? Edit. What's editing? <laughs> edit this out because this is part of. No, you just talk and I'll find okay. it. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, Irish caught between, like, was was that, an, was that an all right point? Or was that just another game Everton have threw away? So this is the first what? paragraph of the official Everton website. Everton were the better team on the road for the second time in the space of eight days. That's and awesome. this time they got some reward, courtesy of a goalless draw at West Ham United. That is the <laughs> first line. What? I mean, that, that literally... Is Sean Dice wrote that? As far as I'm concerned, like that is to me everything that is wrong with this football club at the moment. Everton weren't better than Southampton. We, last week. we weren't better than Southampton. We weren't better than West Ham. We didn't deserve to win either game really. Probably two draws, but but at the end of the day, West Ham probably deserved it more because Jordan Pickford had to make four, five saves, and everyone knows that. And yeah, to sell that to the fan base is like. Auto, auto nonsense, isn't it? It's just laughing. Yeah. Oh, and that's right, where yeah. the club is right now, isn't it? That's where the club isn't is. It's it trying to. Limbo? No, no. What I'm saying is, it's trying to sell mm. a false narrative to people who've got eyes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, mm. it's, it's, it's so well, weird. You look at so you look at comments made by people watching the game, not Evertonians, mm. by other people. You know, Alan Shearer, whether you like him or you don't like him, and great, don't great. He was just like. Awful game of yeah, footy. West Ham were there after taking Everton, didn't want to, didn't mm-hmm. want to win the game, yeah. and then didn't need the job and pick. But and he's there's quite a few saying that you know thingy who was it Jamie O'Hara again. I'm not pulling out you know massively respected names here of people who you go well I, everything he says is right. But he was like, what are Everton doing? Mm. He's like he he said why haven't it? Why don't Everton just go and get a manager that tries to win games of footy and change the narrative? Mm-hmm. And mm. others have said this as well. Have piled in going. Everton are just boring. They're just yeah. a team that is always Sport. down the bottom. And you're sort of going, we're not always that. Well, we have been for three seasons, but we need someone to change that, don't yeah. we? And this thing of I we don't... grabbed a great point. I, I well, I, again, I'd and go to. I mean, did, did you did both of you, both of you just watch match of the day? No, but I saw Ped. You <laughs> you made a comment about that, and I, did, I haven't had time to go back to what. Well, what it's, was the it's on my social. On it's there? on my it's on my Twitter. But if you watch what Mich- Micha Richard says after the game, there's like a big spiel about how terrible West Ham are, and then there's a big positive bit about Evan. And I just thought, where did again? Where are people getting this narrative from? Mm. He was like, Evan. That's a great point for Evan. They're doing really well. It's like if you looked at the table, if Twitch had two, I mean, if Twitch had weighing two two points behind his then, mm. but. But it was like Ipswich are two points behind us, like everybody else is a couple of points behind us. Like, do you have you seen our fixtures coming up? I mean, they're, they're not easy. It's just like mm. there's a narrative out. Most Everton fans, I think, are like, this fella's done. We don't enjoy this. And yet the media mm. narrative is, oh, this it's all fine. It's so weird. Yeah. I can't, you know, again, it's what comes out the club, I imagine, is is pushing that. But it was so weird to listen to that. Evan, like, everything's going great. They're getting a new stadium, they're getting a new owner. It's like, yeah, sound, sound, lads. I'm glad you're enjoying it, but we're not. But the reality is that it now makes, you know, the Wolves game and the Brentford game absolute must-wins because yeah. when you look at what's around them, because yeah. otherwise, before you know it, as you say, you know, a few more points picked up by the likes of Ipswich or whatever, and we're going to get sucked back down there again. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But I think we live in a world now where everyone lives in their own reality, don't they? So there's multiple realities and you can create, we've seen it, you know, what happened in America last week, you can create a different reality and people can buy into it. And it's, football's no different. And Sean Dyche's narrative that we've talked about loads on this podcast is is that he's doing better than perhaps where the club should be and he's punching above his weight and, we, you know, we should be relegation candidates again because that's what he wants because that's what he thrives in. We as Everton fans can see that, well, I think the majority of Everton fans can see that that's, that's, team's better than what he's doing and and we should be striving for more 
but the the wider media landscape you can see it just because people haven't got time to focus on Everton twenty four seven like we have, so they just mm. dip in and out. And if they're told a certain thing enough times, it it sort of subconsciously lodges in your head. And I think mm. I've joked so many times about, and, and we all have about the motto: "Nil satisfaction is the optimum." We need a new motto, like, and we've made like little silly comments about what it should be. But like, what about a motto that just says like "expect better" or like? You know, mm. remember who we are. You know, because mm. that, that's not like saying we should be winning the league. Just have some pride. Do you remember the big sign, like the Wimbledon game? Pride, please. Mm. I know that. I know the players aren't playing in a way where you go, well, they're not trying and all that. But just there, there seems to be no pride in like who we are, what we're supposed to represent, and where we should be. Because mm. Everton should always be aspiring to be better whether we whether we get there or not we should be trying and we're not trying at the moment to be fair Sam that was a misspelling it was supposed to say pies please mm. uh, oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I think that the one thing that I would say is that when you see that narrative of it's one defeat and seven or whatever it is people are forgetting it's seven wins in a year yeah, yeah. 2024 Everton have won seven games of football yeah, yeah. and it's mid-November that is Liverpool have won more than that this season alone. Oh, no, don't bring them into it. But they have. Yeah. But I'm saying it's that thing. We ever have won two games of football. Yeah. Two oh, games of football. You know, Wolves have won one. Ipswich have won one. These teams mm. that hadn't won a game have now won one less than Everton. Yeah. So mm. that's why for me, again, I've said it before, Everton have got to get somehow on the front foot in these mm. games and just right now. Again, when, when, but you know, when we when we look forward and these are the get these are the games such as West Ham, such as Southampton last yeah. weekend, where you're really going to look back and kind of go, what an opportunity to actually mm-hmm. get points on the board, and they just didn't do it. And yeah. and this is the frustration. And and you know you've got to take those you've got to take those results yeah. when 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 they present themselves, or rather those opportunities when they present themselves, because they will come back to bite us in in time. And as I say, it now starts to put pressure on on a couple of upcoming fixtures because around that. You know, between now and Christmas, you just don't know where the points are coming from. No, and not just against the teams that you should be picking up points against, Dave. And I totally agree with what you just said. Also, in the games themselves, when you think the game is panning out in a certain way, mm. this is a game we should be taking three points from because the mm. opportunities like that, it's not every week. So mm. You've got to take in, take in my, you know. But as we said, you know, it, it, it's sort of stating the obvious, but. You know, towards the end of the season, suddenly we start looking at every result and kind of going, you know, once you get into your your, your March and your Aprils and your Mays and stuff like that, and and they all become really critical. But those those three points are as as important, you know, whether you get them in October, yeah. November, as they are if you get them in in April or May. And and as I say, the risk of staying the obvious. Are we still are we still on? By the way, because only you and me here. Like, oh, all right, okay. Don't worry. No, no, it's fine. I just, you know, I was just chatting away to Sam and I kind of thought, I don't really know whether, are we still on? Yeah, we are still on. Good. We are. No, but listen, you can hear me. You can't see me and that's okay. That okay. might be better. Well, yeah. But um, no, I think you're right because what happens is, I mean, Everton have done this before where they've gone into a run of games and you go, get nothing out of these and all of a sudden mm. they pick up some random results. But In the most unlikely of exactly. places. And, and yeah. that could still happen, of course. Ev- yeah, Everton, yeah. Everton won't lose all of that well I don't think they will lose every one of those games in December that people will probably mm. say they will but wouldn't it be lovely to play those games in a relaxed manner where it's mm. like well you know what we did be full when we had the chance we did beat mm. well, you know Southampton we did get mm. a great win at West Ham so when we play Liverpool and United and Man City there's not any sort of pressure on us just there's yeah. a freedom. Mm. All the pressure's on those teams because they have yeah. to win because they're going for titles or Europe. And we can just do what we do. But we've had opportunities. Newcastle came to go to summit, no forwards. They were there for the taking. Yeah. And we didn't beat them. And, and other teams will beat them. And and then later in the season, when it balances out, Newcastle will probably beat them because they've got better or whatever. But we haven't done that. We've, we've blown it the last few weeks. And it's something we've got to correct. And hopefully against Brentford, which is now, like you say, Dave, there's a lot of pressure on that game now. Yeah. Hopefully we can take our chances when they uh, hopefully everything will improve anyway, because right now it's not great. Ten points from eleven games is not a great return, is it? Um forty. Let's go back to because I think the other day in our group you run 
often run this podcast through a piece of software that just gives little clips out and go, why don't you try this one? And you run Sam Avery mm. through it because obviously we were speaking about stuff last week and Sam was talking about um, his choice to be follically challenged. Well, I don't know whether it's his choice, but he's he's, ad- he's took it mm. brilliantly. It's a destiny, I think. Yeah, destiny because yeah. he's, he's a... You know, he's a man who shoots the bald look with the glasses. Mm. Looks great, and it, it, it just as well, eh? <laughs> it did spit out some. Um, it did spit out some interesting yeah. takes, and you know, and give a great title. Mm. So, Sam, I know you wanted to talk a little bit more about this. So, what, yeah. what was your take on what Ped had sent you? Well, what Ped sent me, I, I was, I was, I think I was about to go on stage, and I opened my phone, and I was, I looked at it, but glanced at it, and I was like, "What the bloody hell's he sent me here?" And I looked at it properly afterwards, and it's absolutely phenomenal because I think in the clip in question, I was talking about Everton's slow decline yeah. over the years and the erosion of standards. You know, a, mm. a subject that comes up mm. unfortunately a lot mm. on this podcast, and the AI has has sort of framed it. it well, it's called Clip Twenty Six, and it's just. It sounds like a, a Channel 5 documentary about, about me, basically. It says, embracing decline, a bald man's acceptance journey. And then it <laughs> describes the, the, <laughs> the talk as, a bald man discusses the long-term decline of a situation during a video call, acknowledging the slow acceptance of circumstances, which obviously I was talking about Everton, but it sounds like I've just slowly accepted who I am, mm. and my head, mm. and lack of hair. The slow decline. So I think AI, it's doing great guns in it, but it's got a lot, long way to go to kind of understand exactly what we're talking about. But I feel like we should be shopping that around to production companies. Mm. So, because I think if only you knew of one. If only, if only. Maybe, maybe Dave's got some concerts. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I I know some people in that game, so perhaps we should, we should we should we should yeah well yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we 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 buy any show dot com. You know we should maybe hey, set that one up. Can... You could, merge, together. you could merge two together and it could be called the uh, Hair SOS. Yes. <laughs> on, you get that yes. fellow who sells all the cars. You get his mechanic who looks like he's doing it off the whim, but really it's all yeah. mad, madly staged. Yeah. And it's basically just getting Sam his hair back or some other. Would Sam want his hair back? Well, his suit's not having any. If he had the choice of getting a full, like, Dave Vitti style hair now, luscious locks... Or being bald, what do you think he would choose? I don't. Oh, Dave's got nice asking. hair. Dave, Dave, <laughs> Dave's got nice hair. There, yeah. yeah, but the thing, the thing is, but there are there are genuine, and I, and I genuinely find this quite baffling. There are people who go from being, you know, bald or as good as bald, and then go for you know a quite serious um, hair, uh, you know. Uh, transplant or something. Mm. I mean, the one that springs to mind is Fred Syriex from First mm. Dates, who mm. used to be a bald guy and yeah. now isn't when you see yeah. him. You know, so actually, and, and and good on him. He's obviously wanted to to have his hair back, and he's presumably paid a lot of money for that. Um, but you know, there are people, Sam. And what I mean yeah. is, you know, you're you're not limited by by where you are at the minute. No, if you wanted to no. suddenly, you know, come back with a with a full head of hair, then that's yeah. that's what you want. Go from naught to zero just overnight, basically. Because mm-hmm. that, like, the likes of Rob Bryden, he was kind of thinning on top, and then he he gets a little weave, and he looks, you know, it looks nice and. Mm-hmm. It's funny when you watch Gavin and Stacey and you watch the new episode versus the old episode because I don't think Bryn, the character, is someone who would get a really expensive hair transplant. Mm. Out. That, mm. That's what he is. But then, like you say, to go from this to, like, a lovely like, set of locks would just... It would feel... But it would make a great reality TV Maybe you show. just do it in stages. Maybe it's... Maybe... I mean, all in one is maybe too severe, but maybe it's something that, you know, you, again, you could just do step by step, a little oh. bit like, hopefully, Everton's improvement in, in time to come. You know, well, these you things know. Take, take time. Yeah. We saw it at the weekend. You know, there was the famous Danny Ings last summer where mm. the f- was fully bald on top mm. with, like, a bit of cycle. And he came on on Saturday with his, obviously, his new transplant. Full hair. Looked a bit younger. Almost mm. scored the winner. Mm. Most Salah. Most Salah. Oh, yeah. Most Salah. Most Salah. Yeah, done. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I think Salah's... the only pro- the only problem to this is Sam is... I feel like we're talking about him, not to him, which is half the problem here. But um well See, Sam, can... Sam, you've you've obviously embraced the bald. But I think half of these people, they have a bit of hair. Mm. So suddenly they get a bit more hair and it's like you, it's like as you know when people age and you're not really seeing them age. Mm. So you just mm. accept them as they are. So when these people get hair, you're just like, Oh, there's something different, but I can't put my finger on it. Mm. And it's like you wouldn't go over to them and 
it's like, you know, you wouldn't go over to them and go, ah, have you had a hair transplant? No, the same way if you mm. saw maybe a woman on the bus, you wouldn't go over and go, are you are you pregnant? And she mm. turns around and goes, no, I've just had a big lunch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the mm. same mm. kind of thing. Mm. I have been You've seen someone, and might... someone's asked someone with the pregnant, yeah. which I think is... A... Yeah, but it was... Don't they, they say that? Yeah. Don't they say that you should never ask that question until you can actually see the head? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, fair so play. I mean, if you're there to see why you're getting invited in to look at that, I don't know. I don't know. You wouldn't see it on the bus necessarily either. But yeah, nobody's ever offered me their seat on the bus. Nobody's ever offered me their seat on the bus just because I'm bald, which is. You know, maybe that's a societal problem. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh, people are just accepting, Dave. Mm-hmm. Dave. Yeah. Well, no, like, I'm with you, Barry. I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> just acceptance, Dave. You know, go and look at the head coming out, or offer him a seat uh, on the bus, whichever yeah. it may be. Yeah, whichever it may be. Dave, you wanted to bring something up, not football. So you have got the floor, my friend. So what this is um, is the fact that in this, this is linked in a way to the car scenario Ooh, before, okay. um, and. I know that we've mentioned this before, but for certainly for Sam's benefit, I think it's worth sort of going over it again, is that approximately a year ago, Sam, something happened, and I hold my hands up, it was sort of a mistake on my part that that I think in many ways, um, you know, destabilized my relationship with the group. Um, and and that was to do, that was to do with the fact that I was in Liverpool uh, mm-hmm. nearly a year ago for mm-hmm. a Christmas dinner with the EFL. Um, and I Ooh. didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't meet up with with Barry and Ped while in the city briefly. So, so therefore, my intentions this time genuinely were that I was going to try and pop into the studio on the way in, or indeed on the way out, either next Wednesday or on Thursday when I'm coming back home again. However, now that I don't have a car, I can't do that because I'm straight into Lime Street with my boss and then straight back out again. Sorry, right, it's, it's just building up to asking me for a lift. No, 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 it's not. All I'm trying to say is though, that I can, I'm trying to preempt the fact that we have another potential issue looming mm. because <laughs> in just over a week's time, I'm going to be in the city of Liverpool for approximately, I don't know, kind of, well, not 24 hours, certainly. Mm. But anyway, and, and I think it's now unlikely, unless we can come up with some arrangement, which is city centre-based, mm. you know, then I think we could be in for problems again. And I don't want to be thrown off the podcast for two years running of obviously non, non-meetups. non um, There you go. Sounds all very convenient. Mm. It's not convenient like, because I've, yeah, I've sh- the should have... Sh- I know, but if I had the car, then I could have come past Will your you drive, place. Where are you going to drive up? Yes, 100%. Oh. And i tell you for why. Because I was going to drive up, and I was actually going to stay up north for that week, and then I was going to go to the Brentford game on the Saturday. That was my plan, right? I was going to be oh. there Wednesday. I had a job to do in Birmingham on the Friday. Then I was going to go to the match on the Saturday. So I was genuinely going to drive. But now I've got to go on the train because I've got no car. Okay. Have you heard of rent a car? Yeah, but it all costs money, Ped, you know, mm. and it's like... Have you seen the price of trains? Yeah, but I'm not paying for the train, am I? Oh. The company's paying for it. Well, can't they pay for the rental rent car? Well, they could do, I suppose. Yeah, they could do, I suppose. But but then, but then okay. you see, the thing is, but then the decision to stay up until, you know, I won't be back home until the Sunday because I want to go to the Brentford game, then that's kind of on me then, isn't it? This reeks of, you know, when you're younger and you're going out all the time and you've got that one mate who you just always say to, oh, are you coming out on Friday? And they go, oh, yeah, I'll definitely be there. Yeah, I'll yeah, definitely yeah. be there. And then at the end of it, they go, but if I don't, I'll see you next week. You're, yeah, like, yeah, you're, yeah. Like, you're not coming, are you? You're yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. But, but as I say, genuinely, I was I was intending to come and surprise you and come over for a brew. Just feels empty. Mm. Just feel, <laughs> yeah. What? Just feel okay. empty. So when are you? Here? That's, yeah. that's, 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 that's a genuine. That's You're a genuine. Fact. I'm here next Wednesday, the twentieth. Right. So, so what? What is your? What's your schedule looking like? So you arrive in Liverpool on a train when? Uh, Roughly mid afternoon. Mid afternoon, and you've got. To, I presume you're working at some stage. I'm not working. I'm out for dinner. Uh, on the Wednesday night, and then we are back on a train at about 11-ish on the Thursday morning. Okay. So Wednesday afternoon is probably the best time if okay. you have any availability. Well, either that or I'll Uber you in and out. 
So there you go. Oh. Well, I can get an Uber out to to you. No, well, that, you know what I mean. But but mm. we we'll, we might do it. We'll see. I okay. don't say me if he was local. I, I could pick it up. I could pick it up. Oh, it's all the <laughs> stars are all aligning here. Oh, it's almost like the stars are almost yeah. aligned. This could be this could be a beautiful thing, and then we could actually see how tall Sam is in Sam real is. life. We can get yeah. you pictures, know, Dave, and it'll be like Gary Barlow with it. Will be. And I'll be so... Gary Barlow, and yeah. Sam can be Gary's massive son. You know, and I, know, I know that Sam is slightly younger than me anyway, not quite son territory, but we yeah. could do that, and we could mock it up. Yeah, I, I think great. it looks. I think it almost sounds too perfect. But mm. Let's mm. let that let that germinate. You okay. sound that weird, haven't you, Germany? You started yeah. to use it. Yeah, why? Because of the bloody picture. That's it. Bramley Moors are you, you did because you keep putting bleeding video. The germination of Bramley Moor. Oh look, they've installed another light outside. Hey, we could have having your bleeding stadium. That's what we could call. That's what we could call uh, Sam's. Series about getting his getting hair it. back. The, ger- the German germination. germination. Oh, mm. that sounds like mm. a winner. Sam Avery sounds like a, 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 I don't know. Sounds like a Slayer song, doesn't it? Mm. Like mm. all the drums mm. are going to crash in. Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that, that way before. Funny. That sounds like me when I get up in the morning and my missus asks me, "Am I all right?" <laughs> 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 oh, I was reading before. Oh, yeah. About childhood beliefs, right? What were you reading? Now, you know when right. things come up, that so I've read it. Where did that come I just looked up, I thought... The germination of childhood beliefs? It was the germination of childhood okay. beliefs. But the, any beliefs you have had as a kid, which were just weird, but someone had told you, and you just believed it, like, you know, say something as abstract and nonsense as, like, the moon's made of seas and all that oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But, you know, things like that as a kid, you know, if you eat chewy, it'll wrap around... Your heart and kill yeah. you. That kind of yeah, like that um, you if you eat the seeds out of an apple, you'll you'll, 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 you'll grow come. in your stomach. You know, if you support Everton, you'll be so successful. Things, you know, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, which now, when you look back, you just go, "What the? F- what was? Was I just stupid? Or is it was there just that innocence you believed everything you were told? Is there anything that you can think back now where you think that was a bit stupid, but I did believe it for a period yeah. of time? I think uh, well, good guys always win. Bad guys oh, yeah. always, always lose. Mm. Ah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a full black. black. That's a black. <laughs> that's a black. That's definitely a black. Big time. The, the real world is actually more like the end of Empire Strikes Back than the end of Star Wars, isn't it? Where the baddies yeah. win, basically. Yeah. Well, it seems I like was, that. In the last week, it feels like that, yeah? <laughs> I was told I was told as a kid, and everyone had these weird stories in the rumours when you go going to secondary school, but we, we were told that the school nurse, you know the old grab all your balls and ask you to cough? Yeah, we were told that she actually gets like a, t- a tablespoon and puts mm. you once in the tablespoon. Yeah, mm. and, and people just went, "Oh right," as if that was like dead that's normal. It. Normal. Yeah. yeah. Oh right, that's good. I'm glad she's using a spoon, not her fingers. Yeah. Like I never was happy. <laughs> that I remember that 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 was being doing the rounds, and you never questioned whether the spoon would be a different spoon See, me or whether it was sterilized. See, and I've, I've <laughs> never had. I genuinely, I've never had anybody spoon my balls. No, never. <laughs> Well, next Wednesday, Dave, when I pick it up. <laughs> Sorry, we've got some spoons. I'm just going to say, right? That's going on the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Avery with his ball. I've got no idea how I can put that on the on the thumbnail. Mm. Maybe the this, big maybe spoon. Maybe Mr. Testicles and a massive spoon. Maybe. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Ped, ask AI to label it for you and see what yeah. they're hey, That's a good idea. Like, there you go. That's what the they're picture. there for. Yeah, I it don't know, did he warm the spoons as well? As that's what I mean. If it's a sterilization kettle based, mm. Mm. obviously, spoons, metals are great conductor of heat. The hot, yeah. it'd make it a hot spoon, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, so yeah. that'd be a bit. Oh, I, I don't know I, whether I'd want a cold spoon. I think, or I think I'd rather have a warm spoon on my balls than a cold one, given yeah. the choice. Yeah, maybe because obviously, other yeah. stuff would naturally jump up mm-hmm. then, wouldn't it? Like shrink mm-hmm. back in. Mm-hmm. What was the cough for? To see whether your balls move, but what were they looking yeah. for? I don't know what the connection between coughing and plums are, but there seems to be some kind of link, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Like a healthy, a healthy body, your plums <coughs> like, I don't know, they yeah. jolt, they, they jolt, germinate, maybe. maybe. Or, or mm. have, have they dropped germinate? Maybe, yeah. Mm. The mad thing is, I mean, you know, there's four of us here. We all, we were all different places. At That's different like eight times. balls. Mm. Eight, eight balls. Yeah. I, what, what, listen, don't assume. What, 
Oh, one would, one would assume, three? yeah, mate, might, might not be, might be six or seven. Sorry, I just asked AI and it just said something <laughs> went wrong while responding to your, to your request. Something went wrong. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm not paying I, 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 I can't even answer this. I'm not no, well, you know, I, mm. I, don't, I don't think there's anyone here who remembers anyone who was actually caught out by this test. Do you know what I mean? No, no but do you, hear, do you remember hearing that? Because I, I, that's something. That's one of those things that you've you've forgotten. But the man always... said it. Yeah. Now I go, I remember. Well, wasn't it always in, yeah. like, um, have you ever watched, like, a film about, like, people going to Vietnam? And there was always that one scene in it. Where they put your ball? No way, like, these, the, like, the soldiers would all <laughs> line up. And then they just, the doctor would walk through oh, and you'd just dear. see all the boxes drop. Oh. Most of all, it was like, what? They were getting... Yeah, but what can't... What for, though? I don't no know. one's ever explained what that Why was for. Was, yeah. So, Check the fifth down those Is right. this what... Hang, hang, is this... Whoa, 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 whoa. hang on, hang on. I'll be back in a second. I've got to get this Amazon delivery. Honestly, go on, back. go on. Go on, all right. Did you said spoon. Ball, a spoon. <laughs> and your ball's in the spoon. But, like, you know what I mean? It's like... You always seen those scenes. I'm sure Sam, you'll have seen those scenes in films or whatever, or you know. Yeah. But no one ever explained why they would do. Like so, when we were kids in school, if someone had said, "Yeah, uh, lads, got to drop your your boxes and you've got to cough," I what for? Yeah, drop your boxes and you've got to cough. cough. Oh, cough. So yeah. what? What for? Well, I don't know. That's exactly. Not, so that's what I'm saying. It's what no I'm surprise that all these horror stories are coming out now yeah, yeah. about the seventies and eighties and 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 I'm maybe even thing. closer. Because hmm? who's washing the cutlery? That's my that's question. It. That's what I'm saying. No wonder that I, I used to have custard every day. Stuff. <laughs> that's why the custard was pink. Yeah. <laughs> Can you drink your custard? Yeah, but what? No one ever explained that. You know, no, you know that thing. You just dissected that stuff, didn't we? <laughs> but this is what no, but we did. You know, I've said this before. I mean, <laughs> Dave, hang on, hang on, look at this. Got a label Dave's in there. Dave's just an an unboxing. Dave's just, Dave's just evidencing that there really was an amateur. There, there, there is. So I wasn't messing. If right? There's, there's, no, if there's not a spoon, spoon in that box. box. If there's a spoon in that box for bollocks. Yeah. Then there's, there's no symmetry on this. There's no spoon. Now listen, the reason I had to do it. What? Go on. We were just the saying. reason I had to go is yeah. this is now delivery number three. Okay. Because I ordered something for my brother-in-law's birthday on Saturday. Yeah. And it's sort of adult content, as it were, right? So a it needs spoon. to be signed for. A spoon. And yeah. I wasn't in on Saturday when they first tried to uh, deliver it. I see, yeah. Yeah. That's why I had to get it now. But we were just saying then, no, when we were, like, if someone had said to you in school, right, got to, you've got to drop your boxes and cough. Yeah. No one ever explained what that was for. I mean, no. it never happened to me. But, but it's no better one... that they do it in school than in Woolworths or something, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. I'm not even a doctor. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I, I, do, I do the pick, pick and, and mix. mix. There should be, there should be I pick mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want them doing the pick and mix, given if that's their other occupation, would you? Not unless well, they wash their hands on a regular basis. Used the I've scoop just a pick and mix. Yeah. Spoon and, you know, wondered what I could do with it. Um... If you weigh it and say, that's going to be more than you expect. It, 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 you're right. You don't question it, do you? You don't. You never question. I no. think I've said this before. I'm not going to name teachers, but my first year in high school, as they called it, yeah. senior school. <laughs> when, it sounds dark. It, it, it sounds it's dark. Not, it's not dark. It sounds like, like this is coming from a place that you have buried this really, really, really buried, yeah, yeah. buried. Yeah. But the madness of this that was never questioned was. When we finished PE, yeah, mm. the teacher got a shower with <laughs> no, no. Right? now listen, right? The showers are against the wall. <laughs> At least it was PE we did that for jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> History. But listen, like the end of the shower would be the teacher getting the shower. Well, so like there's I'd say there was like six showers. Are you sure this was an mm. Ari? Right? <laughs> there was six, say six showers. And we just played footy. Mm. Yeah, go in and get a shower, and the teacher mm. will get a shower at the end. Mm. And at the time, everyone was just getting showers. Okay. Now, when I think back, yeah. it's mm. massively not. Okay. Can I ask you a mm. question? No, are you Catholic, to... Baz? I am. Yeah, but he never went to but a Catholic no, school. Get... Yeah. Did they... you have a kestrel in school? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and we didn't have any links. I to... know. Oh, was there us? A... Well... <laughs> Hey, if you no sorry, though. Sorry, if something's just come to my head, if they ever remake Kez, Sam can play the teacher. The teacher. <laughs> yeah. Kez, slightly yeah. balding Bobby yeah. Charlton. 
I'm Bobby Charlton. <laughs> but isn't I it love Matt? That scene. They're at the time. <laughs> Like, if Zach come home now and says, oh, yeah, Mr. Brever was in the showers with us, I'd be down there in three seconds. But then it was just like, what, to get the shower with Get the shower. <laughs> so take his spoon. Back. Just to check if he, you know, get, see if his balls go fit <laughs> on his boot. Mm-hmm. But it is mad, isn't yeah. it? The things have, like, changed. That's the positive, thankfully, the positive thankfully, change. Thankfully, yeah. So, yeah the positive better. change in it. Not everything's better in the modern day, but that's I mean, one thing we I'll be honest, I went to the same school as Baz. But a few years later, and it didn't happen. It wasn't in that school. But it was the same school. I went, no, it wasn't. I went to Hillpuff for three and a half, no, September to Christmas. Oh, and then went to is that why you left? I left. Is that why you left? That's really why I left, but... But well, let's just say it is. The team was crap. Okay, out. okay. So it never happened in Coley's Quarry Bank? Didn't happen in Quarry Bank, no. no. But it wouldn't. John Lennon wouldn't allow it. No. Or Steve Coppel. No. Or Joe Royal. Just name dropping people who went to last year. Yeah, none of them would have allowed uh, that. No, wouldn't I, allow I, I remember that. On our watch. What was when that I went to sec- When I went to secondary school, the f- it was the first, because we'd never get showers in primary school, obviously, and then we did football the first week of secondary school, and we all and the teacher was like, you all need to get in the shower, and he didn't get in with us, so that is mm. progress, but we had mm. to get yeah, together. Up, yeah. And and most of us didn't have pubes, and there was this one lad who had like it. it he was like it, like he was coming from the jungle. He had this massive like set of pubes, and we were all just in awe mm. of this growth that he had. And we were staring. I can't lie. Yeah. We, we were going, no, you... "Oh my god, is that the future?" And that that yeah. was the future. Mm. I'll I'll Great admit thing. I'll admit I never showered in school. Really? No, no. I I'd I'd have legs caked in mud. In classes, and got a shower. No, no, I that that just couldn't. That I couldn't know that. You. I couldn't do that. No, no, no. Were you one of those people that wouldn't go to the toilet at school as well? Because there's people like that, aren't they? People that go for a wee, yeah. but they won't go for anything you'd more to, until they get time, home. Would yeah, you? Yeah, never, I yeah. be honest, I you I don't go anywhere other than my house. Yeah, Shit really. Break. Yeah, um, actually, first all day long, but no, no, not, hours. not as well, we had no. to see, playing in footy teams. It was a communal bath. So I had no issue being in the shower. You really going didn't live in a different era, didn't you? Well, no, because that was still going on. <laughs> if I just couldn't just wait, like properly. Communal baths weren't hygienic, were they? When no, you think about it, especially when they, all. especially when they used to have them in, you know, sort of top flight professional football, yeah. Yeah, or professional sport them, generally. I feel like the, were you, it feels like you were in there with dusty bin. Well, so, do you know what I mean? It's just, sitting in the old communal bath after you've just won an away game, it's tremendous. No, it's great. It might have been tremendous for polio. But <laughs> what's well, this? Legionnaire's disease. What I didn't get was what I didn't get was some would have yeah. a small like some dressing room. In fact, yeah. Ed Goodison was like this. Okay, yeah. A couple of no, just couple of small bats. Yeah. Next what did what you never played? Did, two, but just went for a bat. Two people would get in a small bat. <laughs> he was in the box office. He was like, lads. Who fancies a bath? <laughs> two people well, would get in the, the, the little bath, yeah. and other people would just be getting shot. Why would two get in the little bath? That's what I never understood. But the big bats, sitting yeah. in the big community bath, brilliant. Till someone has a shit. <laughs> Not, on, I mean, Not in the bath. Hey, you play, you've different times, Dave. No, you've just finished playing footy. Mm. You don't, it, mm. it was, there was no issue with that. Okay. I mean, that's a red card offence, isn't it? Shitting in the bath. <laughs> well, is, yeah, I mean, that's not be, good. You can't be sent for an early bath if you're already in the bath. So, mm. you kind of a The last one I can remember being at was Salford City. And there's the, and the reason why I remember it, right, is the bath was freezing, but the showers didn't work. You could do a, you could do a series where you just went As in the, rank the peninsula ground. Well, yeah, but it was a different version of it. Mm. The nonce. The nonce. <laughs> But it was freezing, but there was no showers, and we were. We, I remember we played there in the December, yeah. and it was freezing, and the, it was a mud bath. It wasn't like you know whatever now. So you had you had no. Cho- I wasn't getting putting the old suit back on, or you know this. Okay. No, I I I, I, but, I do understand. But it was freezing. There's a difference between going to like an away ground and and when we were in school. School was slightly different. Yeah. We were all like you know you didn't want to show anything to anybody, yeah. did you? And certainly with the teachers you're talking about, snoring quarry. I don't want it. I don't even want to think about it. If the teacher wasn't getting in the shower with you, you were winning one nil, weren't you? You were all right. I think we're all just a bit Like you said, we've all been mm. stunned into silence by that. Mm. I'm, I'm, listen, Sam, I'm glad that we weren't at school in these times. No, no. Mm. I, mean, we've, I mean, Dave, you weren't even you, Dave, at school in this country. Left. Never mind times. This is very true. <laughs> there was another thing, though, in primary school which is probably slightly less um, sordid. Which was another rumor. Which was there was a guy who broke his collarbone, and then I think he broke it again. This lad, and this rumor spread that if you break your collarbone three times, your arm falls off. 
and, and we all just believed it. Like, oh right, yeah. So no one, no wonder kids believe the Earth's flat. Yeah. If, if they'll believe anything, if you can make a well-designed YouTube video. In fact, yeah. I've got a mate who sent his daughter to a private school, and he's not really very wealthy, and he's, I don't know how he's afforded it, and he sent her to this private school, and when she was 15, she decided that the earth was flat, and he was like, I've wasted all this money on a good education, mm, and yeah. she's just buying into this. So, yeah, but I mean, we're all... We're all Kids are impressionable, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. It's all right for the teachers. You throw them in the shower, yeah. Yeah, you're buzzing, you're buzzing. I think that might be one of the darkest things I've ever heard, you know. It yeah. not happened. No, I know, but it just feels dark. It did It did about. feel like he was going to dig up a load of stuff yeah. in the past, oh, didn't right, it, Ped? No, 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 I, I mean, I, I know that you didn't, but I think all of us were sitting here thinking, bloody hell, are we sort of part of some kind of, yeah, like, yeah. weird confessional now? Confessional. Well, it's nice to see that my attempt to drag it away from that dark thing has just been completely... We've just gone back into it again. Yeah, <laughs> we have. We've, 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 we've dived straight back into that communal yeah. path of despair. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't I see Ped's face honest, right now. There was no, mm. there was no communal bath with the teacher. Sure. <laughs> right. Showers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. there fully, mm-hmm. fully mm-hmm. kitted off, fully yeah. or not kitted, or not. But it not was a glass kitted. bath with a viewing gallery. Yeah. <laughs> Gla- <laughs> like the, like the glass bottom boat. Yeah, yeah. the bath. You just walk, like you can walk well. underneath it just mm-hmm. to check. <laughs> on on that note, let's leave it there for I start opening up all wounds. Listen, you. I don't want to hear about you opening up and a communal shower. No, ever. Bats. I think we've already covered that. Actually, well, mm. there's more to go with that. Right. Let's maybe maybe we can maybe we can talk about it in person when we meet Sam for the hey, first time. Hey, I'm excited. Right. I'm excited. See, see what I did there. That was clever. I seen it. it. I seen it. <laughs> That's what you're here for, Dave. Mm. You bring. I'm gonna that. stand you up with tiptoes the whole the time. I'm, mm. I'm gonna just make myself look as tall as possible. I'm gonna get big, like platform boots. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up with shoulder pads. Mm. Sounds like you're massive really anyway. You're not gonna need to do that. It sounds no, like you're no. trying to get in the Legion of Doom, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't? Come Face on. Face paint. Face paint. What a Shout rush. Oh, what a rush. No, Let's what a leave rush. it there. Go on. Let's leave it there. Cheers, boys. Thank you very much, to everyone listening. Like, subscribe, do all that. Can I plug me tour? Dead quick. Go on, plug me mm. tour. Next year. Go on. So it, it, it went on sale two weeks ago. Loads of people have bought tickets already. Specifically, Liverpool Playhouse, which is until November 2025. Loads of people have bought tickets already. So the downstairs is nearly almost full already. Mm-hmm. So thanks to anyone who's bought tickets. And if you haven't gone to my website, samaverycomedy.com. Thanks. Done. Go and do it. Go and support Sam and go for a great night out when hopefully he won't talk about communal bats and teachers showering with kids. We will see you next. Take it easy. (laughs) Bye.